Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to take a closer look to the concept of the phase angle and the starting position of an object that goes through simple harmonic motion. Because the equation that we use depends a lot on where it is at the time of time equals zero. So here what we have is we have some examples, and let me move over here so you can see it better. So here we have some examples of uh, the sine and the cosine function. Now everybody probably knows that the, the sine function starts at the origin between the x and the t-axis and then starts going up and after 90 degrees or pi over 2 uh, it, uh, it is at its maximum value. The cosine when time equals 0 starts at 1 or 1 times the amplitude in this case and after 90 degrees or 1 quarter uh, pi over 2 uh, it's down to zero. So we're all familiar with the sine and the cosine function. But notice what happens if we put a negative sign in front. It essentially flips the function over. So for the sine function, it starts at time equals zero at a equals zero or x equals zero, and then it goes down instead of up. For the cosine function, instead of starting at plus a, it will start at minus a and then move up instead of going down. So you can see that by putting a negative sign in front, we simply flip the equation or flip the, the graph over. Then if we add a phase angle or subtract a phase angle, what happens? In this case we have the sine function and if we add 90 degrees, essentially what happens is we now start 90 degrees later. So we start at this point over here, that's why the function starts at plus a, x equals plus a, when we have a 90 degree phase shift. Another way of looking at it is if we go plus 90 degrees, essentially that takes the black curve here and moves it to the left 90 degrees, so we start over here. So there's two ways of looking at it. We can do the same with the cosine of omega t minus 90 degrees. Notice minus 90 degrees means that we're taking the cosine function and we move to the left 90 degrees, so we start here instead of here. Or we take the graph and we move it to the right 90 degrees, so we start here instead of starting up here. So that's another way that you can look at. Now we're going to apply that to our simple harmonic motion. So what I've done here is have five starting positions. So we have time equals zero when it's at the equilibrium point on the way up. We have time equals zero when it's at its highest point. Time equals zero when it's at the equil equilibrium point but on the way down. Time equals zero when the object is at its lowest point and then time equals zero when we get back to where we are here. Essentially one and five of course are then the same position so to speak. So therefore we have the way we can then prescribe the equation that describes the motion. So for this position right here, notice we can write it as x equals a sine omega t. That would be this function right here, that would be the black curve and that's exactly what we have starting at this position and going up. Or we can use a cosine of omega t minus 90 degrees, which is this one right here. So you can see that gives you the exact, this is the red one right here, it gives you the exact same function. And so you can use either one of them to describe simple harmonic motion with the object starting here at the equilibrium point on the way up. If it's already at the maximum height right there, we could use the cosine function because the cosine function starts at the maximum height or the maximum distance away from the equilibrium point or we can use the sine function with a plus 90 degree phase angle because plus 90 degrees means we take the sine function which is the black function here and we start here 90 degrees later than starting over here. In other words, we start at the highest point if we add 90 degrees. Or we can think of taking this curve and moving it to the left 90 degrees and then starting at the sine function at the very top. When it's over here, that's the same position as here, but now it's going on the way down. So essentially it's a 180 degree shift. So instead of using a sine of omega t, we can use the negative a sine of omega t, which essentially the graph flipped over. Or we can take a cosine of omega t plus 90 degrees. So do I have that here somewhere? I don't, but what we can do is look at this function right here. And notice we have plus 90 degrees means we move it to the left 90 degrees, which means we're now here instead of here on the way down. So that would be the way to describe position 3. And finally position 4, notice we can do that by taking the cosine function and flipping it over. So now we have minus a cosine of omega t. Do I have that here somewhere? Min yes, we have this one right here. So essentially it's a cosine of omega t flipped over. We get this function which is where we start over here at time equals 0. Or we can use a sine of omega t 
minus 90 degrees, which means take the sine function and move it to the right by 90 degrees. So we take the black function, move to the right 90 degrees, and we start at the very bottom here on the way up, which is what we have for position four. So you can see that depending upon where you start at time equals zero, you can, you can use a number of sine and cosine functions with phase shifts and negative signs in front of it necessary to describe the motion of that particular situation. I hope that this video finally puts you at ease in saying, oh, now I realize why sometimes they use a sine and sometimes they use a cosine or they use the sine with a phase angle or the cosine with a phase angle. It's simply done so we have the correct starting position at time equals zero for that particular motion, depending upon where the object is when time equals zero. And that is how it's done.